this tool. TF Lint has started uh, 2016, well, four years ago, by this guy, Kazuma Watanabe from Tokyo, Japan. And uh, this was the first tool which uh, I remember I used back in the days and uh, it was doing something what was uh, uh, really useful because uh, Terraform uh, required some linting so that it could see what kind of errors uh, people write or what kind of uh, best practices are violated and so on. So this was really an uh, important thing back then. Since that time, few tools emerged and uh, linting became not so much required because Terraform itself became much, much smarter and it could tell you a little bit more. But still, TFLint has uh, developed in a way that uh, it allows us to, uh, to define uh, what are best practices for us uh, and what kind of uh, errors we want to catch. Uh, the typical example is that when we specify invalid type, for example, instance type T1 to X large does not exist, so that's why TFLint will complain and it will tell you that uh, configuration is uh, invalid. Um, and again, Terraform validate would not catch this because it just validate that syntax is correct. But uh, that's not what we want. So the installation is uh, through all possible channels as usual. Bunch of different uh, rules are supported. You, you see 700 plus rules are available. Well, that's a little bit too much. Uh, I will explain uh, how they count these 700 rules. Uh, the tool itself is written in Go and uh, you may think that uh, it's, uh, it's kind of cool that you can easily extend it. Well, if you've been attending uh, my previous uh, tool review about Chekhov, which was written in Python, uh, that's actually opposite to what uh, uh, developers of Chekhov think. They think that Python is cool uh, language and that's what uh, most of users are uh, able to extend. In fact, uh, the benefit of using uh, tools within uh, Go ecosystem is that they can simply import Terraform, uh, Terraform um, as a dependency or um, AWS SDK for Go uh, as dependency. So that's what uh, 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 TFLint is using. So they have 700 rules where these 700 rules are actually uh, Many of these rules, sorry, uh, not many, but they are uh, SDK-based validation. So if it is required by SDK to, to follow certain convention, uh, it will be enabled. Okay, so now let's uh, switch to, to actually code, right? I guess uh, code is the most interesting part. At least it's interesting for me to show how cool it can be. So now the question, oh yeah, here is it. I actually put TF those samples somewhere here and this is where I put some of configurations. Well, isn't it typical that it stopped working right uh, when I wanted to show, right? This is called demo effect. Okay, maybe if I remove this one, maybe this suddenly, s oh yeah. You see how dependent is it? I fix file in one folder, which is absolutely not related, and this is broken. If I delete this content <laughs> in absolutely wrong folder, then this works. No, this doesn't work. Oh my god. <laughs> Restart this server. No. No. Hmm. Uh, that's... Okay, yes. Now, now it does something. But yeah, okay, it's starting slowly. Okay, uh, so what I'm gonna to show now is uh, so I explained that TFLint is tool which you have to run after you make sure that your code is actually valid. So if you write some crazy things uh, with invalid HCL like this one, uh, then uh, Terraform validate will tell you that hey, this is absolutely wrong. I don't know what to do, so go away. Then once you fix your HCL, then you want to know that whatever you wrote here actually makes sense. And that's where uh, TFLint is uh, shining. The first thing which uh, TFLint has is collection of uh, rule sets. Uh, 
Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it has support for AWS SDK uh, and it has support for uh, all rules which are available inside of these resources. Uh, more specifically, let's look into this example. Uh, so here I can see that uh, some things are highlighted and if I hover over it, then I can see that single line comments should begin with hash. Well, that's uh, good to know. So let's make it as a hash. So now it starts as a hash. Now it's not highlighted. And you may think, how cool is it to be able to use uh, TFLint so interactively without executing it, right? So people who are using VS Code uh, probably uh, are kind of struggling with getting uh, Terraform a plugin to do what it's supposed to be doing because it doesn't have autocomplete still. So uh, this is implemented using um, Lang Server, which comes built in with TFLint. As far as I understand, Lang Server uh, support with TFLint is not uh, fully functioning, uh, but uh, for pretty much everything what I wanted to do, it works well. and. I didn't find how you can enable it in official documentation, so I can just show you here. So here I have LSP support plugin installed inside of IntelliJ. Um, so LSP support. And then if I go to lang, lang, what is it, lang, lang server, no, lang, language, probably language server mm, language server where is language server i don't see any language server maybe i have to uh no tf lint where is it ls p plugin well i wanted to show how cool is it and now i couldn't find where to even click uh, but uh <laughs> I need to find it because it's kind of cool. Lan watch language inspection, maybe this one. No. Hmm. So here is it. Language server protocol. Yes, it's not LSP, it's language server server protocol. So uh what you have to do is that you need to uh, specify on server definitions raw command for files with TF extension to run this command. And that's pretty much it. Uh, also, I think make sure that you enable log servers communication and always send request. I'm not sure that this is necessary, but I think so. So once you enable these uh, two things, then you can go to, you see this green icon, language server for extension TF. So this is uh, starting to be green once you enable it. Uh, inside of settings. So what happens now is that every time when I uh, when I save, I guess when I save files or maybe when I type it, it is uh, communicating with language server uh, and uh, it's actually highlighting these warnings. So these warnings are also available in problems if you want to see them, uh, but it looks so pessimistic. So let's don't show it on screen. Uh, so when I see this information here, I can uh, easily fix it. As I showed, I just fixed this one and uh, then there is another one and I have no clue what it means. So I can run, okay, yes, I can run Terraform get. But uh, when I highlight over the, the underlined line, it says module source uses default ref master, which is not recommended. So it should be pointing to specific version one, two, three. I think this is good. So master is like latest, you should avoid it. Um, so w w once you have this information visible here and uh, you fix your code accordingly, uh, it's gonna to be, it's gonna to be faster, uh, faster uh, feedback for you. So now let's look into how you can configure it. So the first way how you can configure it is that you can put dot uh, tf lint file. If you don't put this, then there will be basic things enabled like uh, few Terraform 
uh, standards will be um, not Terraform standards, sorry, uh, Terraform best practice rules will be enabled. Uh, I don't remember which one, but uh, very basic one. Uh, for this example, and actually for all Terraform uh, AWS modules, uh, I enable all of them because uh, that's what uh, makes sense. Uh, makes sense to my opinion. So uh, this is uh, pretty much the whole configuration which you can write. So it's well documented, uh, nothing really interesting there. Uh, now let's talk about tricky parts, okay? Uh, tricky parts here, there are a lot of them, a lot of them. Uh, so the first one, which is related to here. Okay, so I have uh, updated pre-commit Terraform uh, hook to be able to support uh, Terraform TF lint. Oh, so this was available a long time ago. Okay, Terraform TF lint will execute. Here you can specify as args different arguments which you want to do. So in some cases, like uh, with cases with Terraform AWS modules, we don't want to run absolutely all rules which comes natively with AWS SDK. I will explain why later. But uh, I, all I want to do is that I want to make sure that uh, there are basic Terraform best practices rules are uh, enabled. So only those rules are enabled. For situations when you have, uh, let's say like on VPC module, where we have examples, lots of different examples, and also we have uh, some configurations inside of main folder. So that's pretty, pretty much a typical module, how it looks like. We have Terraform configuration files all over uh, the repository in different folders. So what we can do is that inside of pre-commit uh, config file, we can specify that we want to run uh, Terraform TF lint, but uh, we want to load config file, which is actually stored inside of git working dir, which in our case root of uh, repository. So that's why when it will run Terraform TF lint hook on all of these files, it will validate using shared TF lint config file. Uh, alternative solution to that one is to put real pass, but quite obviously uh, my computer is not the same as everyone else's computer, so it will not work anywhere. So that's why uh, we introduced the Git working dir uh, as a placeholder, which will be replaced uh, by Terraform TF lint hook. I think it's kind of cool. So by, uh, when we added this one, it was quite uh, quite obvious that it's going to work for this module. But then I added the same support to Lambda module. Let's see where is Lambda module. Yes, Lambda module. And in Lambda module, this is where things start to be complicated. Uh, you can see that uh, the solution here is slightly different. So arcs are described as only, only, only. So what can be the reason for that? The reason is that if we are uh, checking information, let's say main TF, okay? So we have main TF. Here we see that uh, it's highlighting something. It says does not match valid pattern. Well, of course it does not match because this is module. Module expect a function name to be passed into this module. So there is no need to validate values for this uh, function name. By default, function name is empty because uh, module supports conditional creation, which means that maybe you don't want to create a function, maybe you want to create layer, or maybe you want to just package your Lambda resources or do something else. So that's why all of these uh, parameters are optional, like absolutely all. Uh, I think uh, all without any exceptions, because uh, if you disable, let's say, if you say create false, then uh, that's it. Then means that you don't need to create anything at all. So that's like master switch on all module resources. So that's why it doesn't make so much sense to validate through uh, AWS SDK properties, uh, which are automatically generated. And there are 700 of them. So that's where this uh, explicit listing of rules uh, comes into play. 
here I specify that uh, I want to uh, run only these checks and I don't want to run a uh, check which is called uh, something like AWS Lambda function name, something like that. I don't need that because this will fail because uh, the, the function name, as I said, is provided as parameter. So of course it will fail if you validate default values. So this is one thing which uh, is uh, important to understand. By default, if you specify that you want to enable uh, or you want to run Terraform uh, tflint, it will run against all values uh, or all rule sets which it has enabled. So if you have resource written like, uh, like this one, then it will try to validate it. Well, that's not what I want, uh, at least for modules. So where exactly it makes sense to use Terraform tflint or tflint as a tool itself? Uh, I think it makes sense to use uh, pretty much everywhere, but you need to explicitly enable or disable rules depending on the way you work. If you are working with uh, end user values and you want to make sure that users are only passing correct uh, regex um, matching this one, uh, IRN, AWS, blah, 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 then uh, it makes sense to rely on uh, built-in AWS rule sets for uh, tflint. In uh, all other cases, uh, you will be better off if you just disable them and uh, just make sure that your code is uh, following uh, pretty good established uh, uh, Terraform, um, Terraform best practices. By the way, terraformbestpractices.com is still there. Uh, I still have not found uh, any time to work on it, but uh, yeah, you can still go there, terraformbestpractices.com and read it. So, uh, right. Um, well, I have no clue if there are any people still watching this. Cool, yeah, there are still people watching. That's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, what else uh, tflint has? tflint has support for uh, writing plugins to allow us to verify how our uh, code uh, should be validated. So these plugins has to be written in, uh, uh, in Go. There is uh, tflint plugins SDK, which is currently in active development, uh, but it works. Uh, I didn't bother to uh, to bring this today, but uh, it works and uh, there are few requests for maintainers. So if you want to uh, have uh, tflint uh, like, um, expanded for AWS and for GCP and Azure, uh, you can go to uh, tflint and there are links for maintainers. So you can go there and see um, Maybe you want to spend your time there. Um, okay, I think uh, that was pretty much it. Um, yeah. So from point of view, uh, like from my point of view, uh, tflint is really a good tool to have and uh, it will help you to have at least you know, properly uh, written code. Maybe not so much in terms of how code is actually behaving, like different patterns are used, but at least your code will be uh, containing files uh, in correct places, documentation, uh, commenting, and really cool thing is unused declarations, uh, because sometimes you, you want to see whether you have something absolutely unused. Um, so yeah, uh, I think uh, it's pretty cool, so you should definitely try to embed it as early as possible in your uh, development process. 